culture. I mean, basically, historians have often noticed this, that America goes through these periods of fundamental civic uh, reconstruction about the length of a, a long human life, about 80 or 90 years. You know, when we went from the, the War of Spanish Succession, the Glorious Revolution, then about a lifetime later, we went to the American Revolution, then the Civil War, then the Great Depression, World War II, and, and here we are today. It seems as though, and this is driven by generational aging, that as soon as we lost the generational memory of what it requires to uh, actually govern the nation with you know, exercising top-down authority and in institutions that really work, we have to relearn this at a time of crisis. And uh, we learned, relearned this, you know, in the 1930s, in the early 1940s, we're relearning it today. And, and, and roughly halfway in between these great civic upheavals, we have our great awakenings, where we sort of reconstruct our inner world of values and culture. Right now, we're not doing that. We're relearning uh, how to govern and, and how to refashion our political and economic institutions in a big way and sort of accelerated pace. One of the things you wrote, and I want to indulge me to, to read it, because I, it, it, this book stuck with me like maybe no other that I've read. History is seasonal and winter is coming. The very survival of the nation will feel at stake. Sometime before the year 2025, America will pass through a great gate in history, one commensurate with the American Revolution, Civil War, and the twin emergencies of the Great Depression and World War II. The risk of catastrophe will be high. The nation could erupt into insurrection or civil violence, crack up geographically, or succumb to authoritarian rule. When did you write that? Uh, we wrote that in 1997, uh, back when it was sort of uh, cappuccino time in America, if you recall. But the, the later Clinton years, we were beginning to feel better about ourselves. <laughs> so that was a gutsy call at the time to make. So you, you point out that these 80-year cycles, these roughly 80-year cycles, which are really echoes, go through four distinct turnings of roughly 20-year cycles, uh, yeah. and, and they involve uh, awakening, unraveling, ultimately collapse. Each turning is a generational archetype. One of the things that you point out that I think is really, really critical to think about right now uh, is the rise of authoritarian rule around the world. It predated the pandemic, but the pandemic has also, it seems to me, potentiated that rise. You want to talk about that for a little bit? You're, you're absolutely right. I mean, what we see with the pandemic, it served as a, a kind of mood accelerator, because right now the world depends upon top-down institutions working correctly. And when they don't, when, when it becomes apparent that they're enervated, sclerotic, they can't respond, well, people will then naturally gravitate toward, toward real authoritarians, right? That was the great fear, by the way, of the 1930s, which is another time when we were pulling away from globalism. The world was newly enamored by authoritarian models. We see that happening today all over the world. We see it in Eastern Europe. We see it in Latin America. Uh, we see it in, in uh, South and East Asia now. Uh, look at the countries which have done the best to control the pandemic, actually implementing you know, test and trace, uh, you know, containment as opposed to mitigation. These are more top-down uh, systems. And democracies, liberal democracies like our own, had better learn quickly uh, and know how to respond when necessary. And, and to me, that's the real danger. Uh, it's at a time like this, and we, we've seen this again at various times in our history, critical times when we have to assume the leadership required for the nature of, of, of the challenge that face us, faces us. And that's when we reinvent institutions, much stronger political and civic institutions that actually work. I think in the 1990s and the OOs, Americans were very comfortable being a lightly governed society. This is when Gen Xers are coming of age. Boomers were assuming the reins of leadership. Uh, we've been through this pattern again and again in American history. Suddenly, um, we reach the end of the unraveling, something snaps, and we have to rediscover what governing really means. And this now is a new generation coming of age, of course, uh, millennials, and uh, boomers obviously moving on into sort of a senior leadership role. Uh, but we think this mood is going to stay with us through the end of the 2020s. Right. 
Neil, thank you so much. The book, and I recommend it, is The Fourth Turning. Uh, and uh, thank you for being with us today. We appreciate your time.